You could be fooled into thinking that this talk is for people beginning in their experience, but quite honestly, I think that this is useful for everybody. Um, so hopefully everybody finds this useful. Okay. These are my disclosures. So what I want to do is go over what is the aspects of construction of a guide wire. We'll go over some of the performance characteristics that you can select uh, to try to solve problems during a coronary intervention. You know, when you go on a website and look at the guide wires, there's this diagram. There's, there's usually a chart. And there's all these terms. And the question is, do you know what these terms mean? And do you know how you can take advantage of the information that's being relayed when you look at one of these charts to understand what one wire would do versus another wire? Um, so we'll go through that. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about some guide wire innovation. So what is a guide wire supposed to do? Obviously, it's supposed to navigate the target vessel, get through the tortuosity, get through the calcium. You want to cross the stenosis. And then you need to have enough support to deliver equipment, deliver balloons, deliver stents, deliver microcatheters. And then maybe at the tail end of it is uh, guide wires that are specifically designed to cross microchannels or collaterals uh, for CTO operators. Um, but there are several performance characteristics that are built into wires. What we can do is we can torque wires, we can push wires. The rest of it is part of the engineering of the wire. And familiarity with these performance characteristics is, is key to selecting the correct wire. So there's flexibility, there's torque response, there's the shape of the tip, whether it can be retained, there's uh, tactile feedback in the guide wire, there's penetration force, there's shaft support. All of these things can be selected for if you're familiar with how a wire is made. And the clinical scenario is really what is going to dictate which is the appropriate wire. So these performance characteristics can solve problems. They can create problems. So you have to be familiar with all of these things. Um, so let's go through some of the components of guide wire construction. There's the core, there's the tip, and then there's the coating. And I'll go through all of this and explain to you some of the, the salient points. So the core, there's two typical materials that the core can be made out of. There's stainless steel and nitinol. Stainless steel is very flexible, very torque responsive, but unfortunately it's prone to kinking. Nitinol is far less prone to kinking, but is probably not as torque responsive. So that's, that's probably the, the, the biggest thing to take home from that. Uh, the core itself has several dimensions to it. There's a diameter and there's also a taper to the core. So the, the thicker the diameter of the core, the more supportive it is to deliver equipment. The thinner the core is, the more flexible the wire is. The core itself has to be tapered or ground down. This can be sort of tapered in stepwise increments, kind of like a Saturn V rocket, or it can be tapered in a parabolic grind. Um, so those are some different aspects that are usually delineated in the, in the specs that you look at on the wire. The transition of that core is important because if it's an abrupt transition, that wire will not make corners very well you'll see this wire just prolapses. Whereas if the core tapers over a longer distance, that wire is far more flexible and far more likely to make turns. The wiggle wire is a specialty wire with a very special core that has undulations built into it. And you can see what it allows equipment to do. Equipment can kind of weave around and get past calcium spicules, get past a pre-deployed stent. Uh, so that's a special core for a special use, which I find indispensable, at least in my practice. Um, so what about the, the tip construction itself? So the, the core can be extended uh, almost to the tip of the wire. And at that end, the, the core is attached to the tip of the wire using a shaping ribbon. These types of tips are very flexible. They're safer. Or the core can extend all the way to the tip of the wire. That's called core to tip construction. That gives far more precision at the tip. It incre increases the penetration force of the wire, but obviously that has its own problems. The tip of the wire is typically covered in a coil. The coil typically goes for the first 10 to 20 centimeters on the working end of the wire. Um, the, the coils tend to be stacked on the middle part of the, the coil and towards the tip, the, the coils are usually spaced out a little bit more. Um, that, that provides the feedback, the steering uh, response and the flexibility that, and the visibility uh, to, to uh, steer the wire. The tip can have coverings on it. The, the covering can be a hydrophilic hydrophobic or even a fully polymer jacketed covering. The more coatings that you put on it, you lose tactile feedback, but you improve the lubricity. So it's a yin and yang. You have to decide which, which things you want to prioritize. The tip itself has to be shaped. 
so there are workhorse bends, and this is an area of debate uh, amongst uh, operators whether to use the shaping, the, the needle introducer to shape the wire to put an angle tip on there, or whether to sort of gently stroke it to make a smooth curve on it. The, the idea with a workhorse bend is to make the tip approximate the diameter of the artery you're trying to wire. Once you're trying to do more uh, difficult lesions like side branches, you probably want to put a primary bend that's much smaller and then a secondary bend to allow for reach. Um, all this can be achieved using the, uh, the needle introducer. Um, CTO wires, uh, typically in a CTO wire, the tip is very, very short. Uh, and this is specifically to access microchannels and negotiate very, very tight uh, bends and microchannels. Um, guide wires can be weaponized. You can, uh, you know, the way, to, the way to think about this is there's, there's two aspects of how effective a wire is at penetrating a lesion. There's the tip load, that's the amount of force it takes to deflect the tip of the wire, and then there's the cross-sectional area of the wire itself. So the, the smaller the cross-sectional area and the higher the tip load, the more penetration force that wire has, and that can be further enhanced by loading the, the wire on a microcatheter, weaponizing the wire. Um, what are some innovations? So there's this term that's all, uh, been thrown out there called the dual coil composite core wire. Asahi uh, has pioneered this construction. So there's a core to tip construction, there's a spring coil, so all of that's the same, but then there's a second core inside, which is this, and then there's a second coil inside the first coil. And all of this does is it improves the steering, the torqueability, the tip retention, uh, makes these wires very, very easy to use. I call the Xi'an Blue maybe the, the July wire. It's an <laughs> amazingly uh, effective wire. Uh, but it has its pitfalls. Uh, if you over-torque these wires, you can break them. And so right here, this is, this is the inner coil of that wire. That's the outer coil. This, unfortunately, is not visible on x-ray. So if this happens, you have to be mindful of that, put a microcatheter in there to try to get the whole thing out. Um, other innovations, uh, uh, Boston has just come out with a uh, new line of wires called the Judo wires. These wires are tapered over 60 millimeters, whereas typically wires that are tapered are tapered over 30 to 40 millimeters. The idea is to make the wire even more flexible, more likely to uh, traverse long, tortuous segments. The other thing that these wires have is uh, a very, very tight coil. So if you look here, the coil is right on top of the core, whereas more traditional wires, there's this red gap between the coil and the core itself. So the idea here is that this perhaps gives this wire more tactile response and steerability. Uh, there is a next generation dual coil composite core construction, which is not available in the United States, but this is available in other countries. What Asahi has done is it's the same dual coil, dual core construction, but the outer coil, instead of it being a single wire wrapped around the core, it's actually constructed out of a rope of smaller wires, and the idea here is to avoid that tendency for the coil to break. Um, and so I haven't had any practical experience with this, but this is something that's coming up soon. So in conclusion, I would say that guide wire design properties can solve or cause problems during coronary crossing. You need to familiarize, familiarize yourself with all of these aspects, and that'll make you more comfortable in how to select which wire and when and why. Um, there's pros and cons of all of these wires. Newer wires are coming out all the time. I think that you should probably try to not be um, dogmatic about which wire you use. Keep an open mind and be familiar with the different construction aspects and how you can use this to take care of your patients. Thanks, Jay. I think actually that last point you made is so really important. If you have, um, you know, we all get comfortable with what we're used to, and that works well, but with how fast this is iterating, um, you know, two years later, you're going to be behind. And so it's not to say that we should be early adopters and use everything and start adopting everything, but if you have experience knowing pros and cons of different things, it really expands the toolbox and can make you better as a whole. Any other comments um, from the panel about wires? Yeah, just a, a comment for the fellows in the room. Um, I think it's important to understand that the wires that you become comfortable with in fellowship may not be the same set of wires uh, at the institution you join in your first job. And so I think a lot of the principles that Jay talked about and understanding the different uh, construct of these wires and why you would use which wire when, I think will come in handy when you, when you uh, start your first position. Sorry, we have a question from the audience. Go ahead. Yes, hello. Uh, another question is uh, more, uh, I, I think it's more the experience you have, how you manage, uh, the way you perform the tip of the wire. You, you prefer to do a, a, the first curve or second curve, both, how to, to, to manage that? 
Yeah, I think that uh, it, it depends on the scenario. If it's a straightforward lesion, it probably only needs one bend on it, and whether you're gonna put an angled bend on it or just a smooth curve, I, I don't think it matters for straightforward lesions. For side branch access, you almost always need a double curve, a smaller curve, and then a much longer curve to be able to reach. It just depends on the anatomy. But you know, Jay's point that he made that the radius of curvature should be the diameter of the vessel is not one that many, especially fellows, appreciate. And um, everybody, in my experience, makes too short a bend um, for trying to get across a vessel. For a CTO, it's great, but if you're trying to wire a side branch, too short a bend is not gonna get you to where you need to get. Yeah, it's a fine balance. The, 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 if the curve is too short, you can't reach the branches. If you make the curve too long, you get every branch. Yeah. So you just have to play with this. A quick, quick comment is sometimes um, uh, difficult to wire lesions. You would use a hydrophilic wire. It just goes so smoothly, but we have to re really be careful. Follows. It can perforate. So if, if you've crossed the lesion, you can always switch it out to your regular workhorse horse wire before you uh, balloon and stent. Yeah, the solution to one problem creates another. That's <laughs> the biggest thing to remember. Yeah, and it, I think your last point is really important. So when you get across your lesion, if you can, get a safe wire down there before you do a whole lot of other complex stuff because if you do have a, maybe a jacketed, tapered wire, even if it looks great, sometimes while you're doing other stuff, it'll move on out the distal branch. And even though your, your stint went great, at the end you've got a distal wire perf that can still be quite hard to manage sometimes. 